Today we deal with endings. It's almost the end of May. It's the last day of our church's Easter season. And the readings are from the last chapters of the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel of John. And maybe many of us taking part in this Mass are in the last stages of our lives, our end time. What's to be said about endings? I remember the old saying, a good beginning is half the work. Maybe the other half is a good ending. In the Acts of the Apostles, St. Paul has reached the place he longed to get to, Rome. Having appealed his case to Caesar, he finally reached Rome, but under house arrest for two years. House bound. Some of you can relate to that. So then there's nothing to do except wait, but that's not Paul. He may not be able to get out and about, he may not be able to move around, but he can invite others to come in and visit. So he stretches out his hand in welcome to the local Jewish leaders, invites them in, explains his situation to them, and we're told he teaches them about the kingdom of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul may be in limbo, left dangling as to the outcome of his case. No matter, he doesn't give up. He doesn't just resign himself to being housebound. Later, from that place, that house in Rome, he will write four of our New Testament letters. His letters to the Ephesians, the Philippians, the Colossians, and to Philemon. Maybe many of you can relate to Paul. You're no longer mobile. The end draws near. You're alive, but not nearly as active as before. Maybe you need to be washed and clothed and cared for. You need to be looked after. Other people make decisions for you and sometimes take you places where you'd rather not go. You live on, but how much real living is there? You can complain about it, wish it were not so, allow it to get you down. Or, like Paul, you can try to adapt to it and go with the flow. Being confined or housebound limits your life, but does not mean you have to give up. We can relate to the active people, the doers and the goers. But not always. We're past that, maybe. And it's good to see that the end time can be productive in its own way. Life is not all about going here and going there, doing this and doing that. Life is also about the present moment and its possibilities. What John Vanier calls a time of rest and quiet to find silence in myself, to be at peace with life, here and now. So the Acts of the Apostles ends in Paul's house in Rome. It had begun in just such a location in Jerusalem, a group in an upper room waiting. Waiting for what? They weren't really too sure. 
And then came a sound like the rush of a mighty wind, followed by divided tongues of fire, a tongue resting on each of them. What was that all about? You know the answer. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. So on the eve of Pentecost, let us pray in whatever situation we find ourselves. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. So on the eve of Pentecost, let us pray for all in captivity, prisoners of war, inmates of jails, the shut-ins, and the housebound. We pray to the Lord. For all who come to visit us, to reassure us we are not forgotten, we pray to the Lord. For our church, that it may welcome people of all colors, all ages, and all languages, and be enriched by their presence. We pray to the Lord. For all who wrote or phoned to request our prayers, for their intentions and for our intentions. We pray to the Lord. A spirit and prayer. O oh, Divine Spirit, I want to be before you like a light feather. May your breath carry me where it will, and may I never offer the least resistance to it. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray that our offering today may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Lord, may the coming of the Holy Spirit prepare us to receive these holy sacraments, for he is our forgiveness. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his risen body, he plainly showed himself to his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight to claim for us a share in his divine life. And so with all the choirs of angels, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. 